Let me open the Bible with you tonight to the ninth chapter of the book of Hebrews. The ninth chapter of the book of Hebrews, beginning with verse 23, And it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves which better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to, be, uh, to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. But then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Other men have been stoned, other men have been beaten, other men have been crucified, other men have been hounded by the godless crowd. But of no other man has it ever been said, or of no other man could it ever be said that by his death he put away the sin of the world. And it's appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Let me call your attention tonight to that old familiar text. It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. To die is written over the door facing of every man's soul that ever comes into this world. Only two men that have ever been in this world got out of it without dying. One was Enoch who walked with God and was not for God took him. And the other was Elijah who went up by a whirlwind into the heavens. All others have had to die, even the Son of God himself died upon a cross. And if Jesus tarries, if Jesus tarries, each man and woman, boy and girl in this auditorium tonight, and the thousands listening by the means of radio will someday have to pass through the portals of death and out into eternity to die. To die, I read in the Old Testament about the men and the women that lived to be eight, nine hundred years old, five hundred, six hundred, but it always wound up by saying, and he died, and he died. And so tonight, to die is written over the door facing of your soul, and death comes sometimes at a most, uh, at a most unexpected moment. The fact of the matter is that disease may already be in your body that's going to take your life. You do not know. Therefore, you ought to be ready. You say, well, Dr. Lakin, I'm not afraid to die. Sam Jones went home one day and his wife said to him, Sam, I want you to go see the old sheriff because he's dying. And Sam said, I said to my wife, well, honey, you know, he has never believed in God. He's an infidel. He's an atheist. She said, but I want you to go to see him. And he said, I went to see him. I went to see him. I went in. I said, Sheriff, are you afraid to die? And then he said, Sam, I've always told you that I wasn't afraid to die. And then he said, I knelt down a little closer to him and said, but Sheriff, what about the judgment? And then he said, he almost threw himself off of the bed when he said, my God, I hadn't thought of that. My God, I hadn't thought of that. Listen to me, my friend. If we lived like a brute and died like a brute and they shoveled us back into the earth and that was the last of us, that wouldn't be so bad. But after that, after that, and that's the thing I want to talk to you about tonight, after that, the judgment. There are many things about the judgment day now that I do not know. I do not know many things about the judgment day. There are some things that I do know about it and I want to bring that to your attention tonight. Number one, remember this, it comes after death. I do not know what it is or what it's like, but the one thing is it comes after death. And the other thing about the judgment I want you to notice tonight is this. It comes sometimes when you least expect it. And some of you listening to me tonight, some of you listening to me tonight, remember this. You're 24 hours nearer tonight than you were last night. And you're 24 hours more sin on you tonight to meet the judgment in than you had last night. And you've got 24 hours less chance to get ready for it tonight than you had last night. After this, the judgment, my friend of many years, has gone to heaven now. Dr. Walter Lecklider of Richmond, Virginia. Dr. Lecklider said he was preaching one night in Washington, D.C. He went back and said to a man, are you a Christian? And he shrugged his shoulder and said, I'm all right. And he said that night as his worldly wife went out of the choir 
She said, why did Dr. Lecklider want to embarrass my husband? He's all right. And he said, a few, about 10 days later, I was back in the city to lecture. My phone rang in the hotel. And the lady said, Dr. Lecklider, I want you to come quickly. My husband's dying. I got in a cab. I rushed to cross the city and up to the door. She met me at the door and said, go in and pray with him. And I said, he's all right. And she said, why do you say that? Why do you say that? He said, you remember 10 days ago when I tried to lead him to Jesus Christ. And you haughtingly said, he's all right. But she said, my God, Mr. Lecklider, he wasn't dying that night and he said I went in and he said to me Lecklider pray for me please and I said you're all right oh he said why do you mock me he said you remember 10 days ago when I tried to lead you to Christ and you haughtingly said I'm all right but he said Mr. Lecklider I wasn't dying that night I wasn't dying that night you feel like you're not dying tonight and that's the reason you're unconcerned did you know when I walk out of this building tonight I walk out of this building tonight and down the street and out yonder in the heavens tonight are thousands of worlds sparkling yonder in the sky tonight many of them many many times larger than this little speck upon which we live called the earth but I know I walk out of this building tonight and down the street I pay very little attention to those stars why I'm not concerned about them I'm not interested in them why because they seem to be so far away they seem to be so far away listen do you know why you're not interested in death and hell hell and judgment and eternity is because it seems so far away it seems so far away you let the you when you're down yonder in the, beneath the old oxygen tent and the doctor shaking his head and looking concerned it'll not seem so far away then it'll not seem so far away then and so tonight let me talk to you if you were to cease to breathe tonight where you sit you would not pass into the nowheres you would not be out you would not be an an Anonymity, you'd be somebody and you'd be somewhere and let me talk to you about the judgment day for a moment tonight I know people who live in sin and who live like brutes would like to think they would die like brutes and that would be the rest uh, would be the end of it and people living in sin tonight may scoff at the fact of the judgment and may scoff at the fact of a life beyond but remember this you may laugh at the fact and you may scoff at the fact but you'll never be able to laugh the fact away you'll never be able to scoff it out of this book tonight because thy word O God is forever settled in heaven it may not be settled in universities and colleges and seminaries but to put it down tonight it's forever settled in heaven and the stars may fall and the mountains crumble to dust and empires cease but thy word O oh God is about will abide forever and you'll never get around it and so tonight the certainty of the judgment day out yonder before you tonight is true why because God said he hath appointed God said he hath appointed God said he has fixed a day in the which he's going to judge this world in righteousness God hath appointed or fixed I do not know when that day will be but I know this tonight in the calendar of God tonight the judgment day is a future definite fixed event the same as 4th of July New Year's Christmas or any holiday is fixed in our calendar tonight and God said he hath a fixed a day in the which he'll judge the world in righteousness by that man Christ Jesus whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that they have raised him from the dead laugh at it tonight if you will but you'll never laugh it away scoff it if you will but you'll never scoff it away it's going to stand out there tonight the judgment day let me say this to you my friend God said I fixed it and it's an absolute certainty I think in the days of Noah folks laughed at the idea of a judgment folks laughed at the idea of a judgment day when Noah said that faithful preacher went out there and said God's fed up with this whole mess and he's going that wrath, the vials of his wrath have filled up and they're about ready to overflow and pretty soon God's going to pour his wrath out upon this whole earth out upon this antediluvian world and he's going to put the waterworks to it and scrub it and scour it until it will be a fit place for decent people to live upon God said I'm going to sink it beneath the earth beneath the flood waters but he said Noah you build you an ark and God said Noah you build 
you an ark for the saving of you and your house. And Noah went out there and preached that, that God's going to bring a judgment day. And you know what they said? Dr. Broadmouth and Dr. Wigglejaw and Professor So-and-so down yonder in the college and the university laughed at them. And the people said to them, what do you think about that kind of preaching that Brother Noah's doing? And they said, well, Noah's a pretty good country preacher. He's a pretty good country preacher, but he's got a little roof trouble. And his trolley's off, so don't pay him much mind. Let me tell you, one day God said, no, it's all over now. It's time to come in. The ark had been completed, and Noah came in. But that morning they started the animals coming up out of the jungles and the forest two by two. And so they said to the critics, they said, what do you think of this? And they said, it's quite a phenomenon, quite a phenomenon, but unscientific to believe there'll be any rain because only a mist has gone up from the earth. And then God said, Noah, take your family and go in. And he went in and God shut him in. And God shut him in. And when God shut him in, the clouds got, began to roll up and it got dark above and the earth trembled from beneath and the waters came up and the waters came down. And when the floods descended and the rains came, you know what they did? They got out their little John boats and their little rafts and they started manufacturing some sort of a conveyance for them and somehow they had them all the way along and theirs was just as good as Noah's Ark as long as the sun was shining. When the test came and the judgment came, they found that theirs was inadequate. A lot of you tonight listen to me. You've got your little, you've got your little religious raft. You've got your little skeptical raft. You've got your little raft of liberalism. You've got your little evolutionistic raft. You've got it all. And you know something tonight? As long as you're healthy and red blood in your veins, that's just as good as the old time religion. But let me tell you something, brother. When the undertaker backs the hearse up at the door, you'll want the old time religion then because you'll want something to stand in the days of Lot they mocked it too but the flood just as the flood came in the days of Lot the fire fell from heaven and when the fire fell from heaven and Lot and his two daughters had escaped from the cities the plains burned up let me tell you every one of God's judgments every one of God's predictions about judgments in the past has come true every one of them and just as every one came true in the past every one of God's predicted judgments in the future will come true in spite of all the false hopes and false theories that's held out by all the false prophets and the modernistic preachers of this world. Every one of them will come true. And so my friend remember this tonight. Remember this tonight. The judgment day is as certain as the sun to come up in the morning and more certain too. You say brother Lakin but it doesn't include me. Yes because the judgment's going to be universal. You may get away from some things but let me tell you something. God God's going to judge the world. I don't mean just a few people on the other side of the tracks. I don't mean just a few, uh, just a few poor people and ignorant people. Like a, per a preacher said to me not long ago, he said, I have to have a revival every now and then in my church to satisfy that class of people. He said, the more intellectual, the more cultured of my congregation, they don't believe in it, but I have to do it to satisfy these others. Let me tell you something, my friend, when the judgment day comes, Comes, you're going to stand before God regardless of race or standing or culture or condition. You're going to stand before God. And the woman that sparkles and scintillates with diamonds and rustles in silks and satins is going to stand before God the same as the woman, my friend, that cleans and scrubs her floors because it's not going to be a class proposition. You're going to face God. You may not think so. You may not think so. You may not like it. But my friend, I'm telling you this. God said you're going to have to stand before him and when that time comes you'll not evade it you'll not avoid it you'll not escape it you're going to have to stand and you'll be brought there and kept until your case is settled I've had people escape me while I've been preaching I've had people get mad and leave the meetings I've had people say I don't go to revivals and when they say that, I tell them this. There's one meeting when you're going to attend. There's one meeting when you're going to be there. <coughs> when every unsaved man, when every hypocritical church member, there's one meeting when you're going to be, and that's the meeting of the judgment bar of God. And you'll not run out. You'll not get away. You're going to stay there until your case is settled. Why? And he's bringing some of you to it tonight. You know what? Listen. 
Out yonder in heaven tonight, when God gets ready to bring you to judgment, you know what he did? He dispatched a deputy sheriff from the glory one day and touched your hair and it became gray. He dispatched another one day and touched your limbs and you walked upon a cane. He dispatched another one day and touched my eyes and I put on these glasses. Listen to me. There's an old gray-bearded preacher going up and down this world with a moon scythe in one hand and an hourglass in the other. And one day he'll take you for his text and he'll mow you down and drag you to the judgment bar of God and when you come you'll have to face him and stay until your case is settled you say brother Lincoln I'll have to come it's a world judgment it's a world judgment universal judgment but you said what will he judge me about that's the question if you're indicted down yonder in the court they always file in the court what they call a bill of particulars and in that bill of particulars they list certain things with which you are charged and when you stand before the judgment bar of Almighty God and the books are open and the books are open and you're being judged out of the things that are written in this book. You're not judged for your state in eternity, but you're judged for your standing. You'll be judged for your standing in eternity out of the books. He said the books were open. Of course, there's a book also. And those that are found in the book will not be in the books, my friend. You'll be judged out of the things that are written in the books. And when do you come to face that? You know, one of the things he's going to charge you with is this, my friend. He's going to charge you with in that book that day on these secret things because he said in that day when God shall judge the secrets of men's hearts by Jesus Christ let me say this to you tonight my friend secret things things that are covered things that are hidden things that no one knows about you'll have to answer to God for it you may hide some things tonight from your wife you may hide them from your husband and from your children your family you may hide them from your pastor you may hide them from your church but you'll not hide them from God. Why? Because fl eyes like flames of fire that runs to and fro throughout the whole earth will uncover, reveal and bring those secret things to light. I believe there are people tonight would commit suicide in a moment if they knew things that were covered up in their lives were going to be exposed. I wonder tonight as I preach I wonder tonight if I could cause the three secret sins of your life to come up out of your heart tonight and write themselves across your face. I wonder how many in this audience or the audience by radio would, would want a false face if that could happen. Let me say this. Suppose I had the power tonight to put your life right up there on that wall tonight and your heart as the people think it is. And then on the other hand, suppose I could put it tonight as God really knows it is. Would you want to be sitting beside your wife? Would you want to be sitting beside your husband? Listen to me boy, listen to me girl. Would you want your mother and father to see it tonight if I could put it up there? Would you want it tonight? Suppose I'd say in the next five minutes I'm going to put the secret sins of this audience upon this wall tonight. How many of you would grab something and rush out of this building tonight? Suppose I could take you down into the basement of this church tonight and there turn out the lights and on the wall flash your heart tonight as God really knows it is. I wonder what you'd think about it in that day when God shall judge the secrets of men's hearts by Jesus Christ. You may cover it and hide it for a while, but be sure your sin will find you out. Be sure your sin will find you out, if not now, at the judgment of God. Because you say, well, Brother Lincoln, what could I do? Well, some men's sins are open beforehand, going before them into judgment, and some men's fall after. Thank God I want to send all my sin ahead, my friend, to the judgment of God and have it covered. They said the man yonder, Martin Luther, said in prayer once the devil unrolled a great scroll to him and he had on it there he had on it all the sins that he had committed, the great wrong roll of sin. And the devil said, for this, you must go to hell. And then Martin Luther said, I said, but devil, there's one thing you didn't put on it. And he said, this, this is it. You ought to write at the top of that for the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Thank God I have no fear of the judgment. Thank God I have no fear of it. Why? Because Not because I'm good or perfect or have always been sinless, but because my sins are under the blood and they're 
covered and they cannot be seen and blotted out of the book of God's remembrance. You say, Brother Lincoln, I'm a member of the church. That doesn't matter. You said, I've got my name on a church book. Church books will be burned. Church records will be burned. But my friend, the only book that will abide is the book of life. And if you have it there, these others do not count. And then he said, for every idle word that men shall speak, most of us talk too much and say too little. What's the most idle thing you've ever heard is for a man to say there is no God. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. And in that day when God shall judge the secrets of men's hearts. Let me say another thing tonight. You say, Brother Lakin, what will be the final verdict? Well, whatever it is, it's going to be eternal. It'll be eternal joy and eternal happiness, eternal misery and eternal woe. It's going to be eternal. The issues of the judgment day will be eternal and will be based upon what? Upon this one thing. What did you do with Jesus Christ? What did you do with Jesus Christ? In that day when God's judging you and you stand face to face with him, he'll ask you this one question, what did you do with Jesus? What did you do with Jesus? The other day I stood yonder last week, I stood in Jerusalem. I stood in Jerusalem, I went over to Pilate's Hall. I stood there in Pilate's Hall. After I'd come from the Garden of Gethsemane, I walked down and across the little brook Kidron and over into the Garden of Gethsemane. And there under the old olive tree, I knelt and prayed. Rushed out of his have that night when the blood was forced out of his skin. And as I prayed in the garden, I saw the crowd come led by Judas. I saw them lay hold upon him and take him over to Pilate's Hall, take his garment off him and slash him and with uh, with the thongs tied with bits of bone and steel until the blood ran and the gore spattered and he stood there for a moment with a crown of thorns and a seamless robe wrapped round him and then they said and then he sought somehow to get him off of his hands Pilate did and he said whom shall I release and they said Barabbas release unto us Barabbas and then he said but what shall I do with this man which is called Christ and they cried crucify him crucify him crucify him and listen to me my friend tonight when you stand yonder before God Jesus is standing in Pilate's hall friendless forsaken betrayed by all hearken what meaneth this sudden call what shall he do with me You'll have to answer for, to God for how you've treated his son. Let me say another thing. You say, Brother Lakin, who's going to judge me? It's going to be one who knows all about you. It's one who knows your faults and your failings. It's the one who knows where you've been and where you're going. It's one who knows every thought that ever percolated through your brain. It's the one who attends the funeral of every sparrow and counts the numbers of the hairs of your head. That's the one. It's Jesus Christ. What Jesus? The Jesus whose deity you're denying. The Jesus whose blood you're spurning. Jesus whose love and mercy you're rejecting. That's the Jesus that you'll have to stand and face. You heard the story of the man standing on the street corner when a runaway team came rushing down the street and he leaped out into the street and was about to be crushed beneath their feet when a man pulled him to the walk. And that night for some minor crime he was arrested and the next morning before the judge, the judge was about to sentence him and the man said, but judge you don't know me do you? And he said, I'm the man that you saved last night. And the judge said, but last night I was your savior, but today I'm your judge. And tonight he's your savior. Tomorrow he'll be your judge. That's going to be a sad day, isn't it? When you stand up before him, that's going to be a sad day for Pontius Pilate. When he stands up there before him, I've often thought of Pilate sitting yonder on that throne. I see that man come rushing down the aisle and hand him up a little note. And it said, have nothing to do with this just man. I've suffered many, I've such a strange things in a dream concerning him. And Pilate said, give me some water. And he washed his hands. But he didn't wash his heart. And down yonder beside an imaginary stream tonight, in the place of the damned I see a man wash his hands and lift them and the blood drips from his fingers again and when he stands yonder face to face with him he said Pilate you had me before you one day and he said you knew I was innocent 
You knew I was the son of God, but you were a political pite and politician in order to cater to that crowd. You allowed them to take me out on that rugged hill and nail me to a cross, Pilate. Pilate, you knew it that day. That's going to be a sad day for Judas Iscariot. He said, Judas, you remember the night you came across the little brook and over into the garden and said, Hail, Master, and kiss me. You remember when you went yonder and sold me for 30 pieces of silver and then threw down the silver. And I imagine yonder tonight walking up and down the sulfuric streets of the damned. A man throws the money down. It bounces back into his hands and it bounces back into his hands. He said, Judas. If you had only waited, even after they crucified me, if you hadn't gone out and hanged yourself, if you hadn't gone out and committed suicide, if you'd even waited until after I'd arisen from the dead, and if you'd have stopped as I went along the road to Emmaus, if you'd have only stopped then and come out into the middle of the road and bowed down before me, I would have forgiven you, saved you, and taken you to heaven. But Judas, you sold me and went out and committed suicide. It's going to be a sad day for some false preachers and false prophets and professors who've damned people and robbed them of their faith and taken away. It's going to be a sad day. It's going to be a sad day for some mothers when they turn, when they turn the street yonder in the corners of hell and run into a daughter that said, you put me in the dance and you put me in the place of a amusement and here I am it's going to be a sad day for some father whose son runs into him and said I filled a drunkard's grave because you taught me because you taught me that's going to be a sad day for some my friend when you stand up before him listen sit here nonchalantly tonight but remember this there's coming a day when you're going to stand face to face with him I dreamed that the great judgment morning had dawned and the trumpet had blown I dreamed the nations had gathered to a judgment around the white throne and from the throne came a bright shining angel that stood on the land and the sea and swore with his hand raised to heaven that time was no longer to be then oh what a weeping and wailing as the lost were told of their fate they cried for rocks and mountains they prayed but their prayers were too late I would God I could paint you a picture of the judgment day tonight till you'd never forget it yonder the great hall is all filled now and, and the people are waiting with expectancy and yonder is the throne it's overwhelming splendor I can't describe and then there comes one to sit upon the throne around his head is a rainbow at his feet is a sea of glass and his face is described as shining above the noonday sun and the books were opened and he began to judge them out of the things that are written therein and when he had finished and when he had finished he said depart for me you curse into everlasting punishment. And there is a scurrying hither and yon. And the first thing you know, the big hall is emptied and the big book closes with a jar and the judge comes down from the throne and the court of heaven has adjourned for eternity. The high court of heaven has adjourned and will never meet again. It will never meet again. Listen to me, my friend. What you do and about the salvation of your soul, you'll have to do before the wood of the cradle ever bumps the marble of the tomb. That's my message to you tonight. If you were to cease to breathe where you sit tonight, would you be in heaven or hell? It's appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment those of you listening to me tonight way out yonder across the hills and valleys with tears tonight I say do not come upon this thing unexpectedly